Okay, so before we get into the review, I wanted to point out that the original scheduling for the release of Renew Your Vows has changed just a little. Originally, Renew Your Vows was supposed to release every two weeks. However, for reasons I'm not completely aware of, it's changed. So now Renew Your Vows is a once a month type of thing. Now, I will be talking about the second issue of Renew Your Vows here. So if you haven't read the first issue, don't worry, I have a video where I covered that one. So you can go ahead, watch that one, and get caught up. Either way, let's go ahead and get right into Renew Your Vows number two. The comic opens with Peter in some kind of fire. He looks around and notices his wife Mary Jane holding their daughter Annie. Peter then finds Eddie Brock covered in the Venom symbiote, pleading for Spider-Man to save him. Brock begs Peter to save his life, saying it was the symbiote that attacked him. He says he would never hurt an innocent child. Peter reaches out to save Eddie, but the symbiote begins to mock Peter, saying that wasn't how things happened. That Peter is no better than him. Peter wakes up from this nightmare as his spider sense alerts him that there's something wrong with Annie. It turns out Annie actually inherited Peter's spider powers and used them to get on the ceiling after having a nightmare. Peter and MJ remind Annie that if she uses her powers, they might come and take her away. Ever since Regent took over, he's been scanning the areas for anybody that might have superhuman powers and has been sending his minions to go and capture them. Annie knows she can't use her powers, but is still very hurt by what they tell her. She understands why she can't use her powers, but she isn't happy with it. The next day, everything seems to go back to normal with them. After walking with MJ and Annie, Peter runs off to go send some pictures to the Daily Bugle. MJ walks Annie to school, where Annie decides she doesn't want to go to school with her mom, since none of the other kids have their parents with them. MJ decides to let her go, but reminds her no matter what happens, she can't use her powers. Annie is really sad and asks MJ, without her powers, is she still special? MJ replies to her, with or without powers, you will always be one of the most special people in the world. Back with Peter, we see him taking pictures of some of Regent's minions attacking a superhero. One of the last superheroes left. In the shadows, Mockingbird and another S.H.I.E.L.D. agent are reporting back to S.H.I.E.L.D., asking if they should intervene in the situation. Their commander, which I'm just going to assume is Nick Fury, tells them it's not worth helping, and that while they can use all the help they can get, this one's a lost cause. The hero is captured and taken to Regent, who doesn't seem to care about him. He orders the hero be taken for a dissection. Regent is then given a report that a local school has shown reports of an individual with high power levels. Regent orders his minions to go and bring back the powered individual. Peter arrives at the Daily Bugle, which is now very advanced and very high tech. Peter submits the photos he took from earlier and Jameson pays him for them, despite the fact that they can't actually publish those photos due to everything being under Regent control. One of the workers tells Jameson that he saw some of Regent's minions heading towards a public school. Jameson tells Peter not to go and take pictures, but Peter has already left, although not for the reason Jameson believes. <clears throat> Peter contacts MJ and they both run over to the school as fast as possible, fearing that Regent has Annie. In order to get there as fast as possible, Peter uses his powers, and he hides his face with his hood, although the people notice him and shout in delight that Spider-Man has returned. At the school, Regent's minions are attacking the power pack, a group of kids with superpowers, while Annie is standing there watching in disbelief. Peter arrives and tells the power pack to get out of there as soon as possible. One of Regent's minions, Rhino, an old foe of Spider-Man, is eager to see him again. However, Peter is not messing around and he takes care of Rhino with one punch. MJ arrives at last and grabs Annie to safety while the power pack manages to escape. Regent's minions are defeated and they report back to him. Regent is disappointed that they could not take care of simple children. His minions try and defend themselves, saying it was all Spider-Man's fault. Regent decides he can't trust them with this task, and calls in his elite team to bring down Spider-Man, the Sinister Six. Back home, Peter is mad at himself because he is exposed to the world that Spider-Man is still alive, and now his family will never be at peace. He considers running away, but MJ says that would only make them look suspicious. Besides, there's nowhere to run towards. MJ decides Spider-Man is going to have to stick to the shadows, and pulls out a Spider-Man outfit based on the symbiote, the Venom symbiote. Annie is scared by this since it resembles the shadow that kept coming back in her nightmares. Peter tells Annie that she shouldn't worry about it. He got rid of that monster a long time ago, because that's what daddies do. They do anything to keep their family safe. Anything. Renew Your Vows number 2 is, yet again, another wonderful, well-made comic. We get a lot of characterization for Annie. She's very troubled by having these powers and not knowing what to do with them. She doesn't know what these powers mean or how to live with them. What she is and who she is without them, they're all questions that she has in her mind. Also, Peter even gives her a modified version of Uncle Ben's speech, 
We have a great power, and with that power comes responsibility to hide it. Also, when Peter arrives to fight Regent's minions and save Annie, she's in a sense of shock. I mean, she's seen her father use his powers before, but she's never seen him fight, and she certainly hasn't seen him knock someone out with one punch. She wants to do something with her gift, but her life circumstances aren't letting her. Meeting the power pack only made her even more unsure about what to do. I also feel a sense of Peter and MJ, they don't completely trust her. I mean, she's given an inhibitor bracelet that locks her powers. Now, I know there's no opportunity to train Annie, and I understand they're only trying to make sure Annie is safe, but this inhibitor bracelet, it seems like a lack of trust to me. Also, both Annie and Peter are still suffering from the Venom attack in the first issue. They both have nightmares of that attack. We see Peter feels guilt about what he did, which is really good. Peter might have been justified in his own mind for killing Venom, Venom, but realistically speaking, he should have some kind of trauma after that. In this event, however, it isn't keeping him back from his promise. He swore to protect MJ and Annie at any cost, and this is shown very well at the end of the comic. He never wanted to wear the black Spider-Man suit again, but if it means protecting his family, he will do it. Anything to keep my family safe. Anything. Annie's nightmare is never really shown, but it's really obvious she's still very affected and scared because, I mean, she just saw the suit that resembled Venom and she got scared by that. Once again, though, I have to complain about Regent. He has no proper motivation. He's very generic and he's just a power-hungry villain. Any villain in the Marvelverse could have replaced Regent's role and it wouldn't really matter. As of now, Regent's not important. What's important is what Regent stands for. He's the controlling force right now. He has all the power and is causing all the problems in Spider-Man's life. But as a character, as an individual, he hasn't done anything. Hopefully that changes. There's also a plot building about S.H.I.E.L.D. creating a resistance against Regent. I'm interested in how that will work out. How many superheroes are actually left? I mean, in the last issue, Iron Man and Captain America called together supposedly every hero and they died against Regent, so who could be left? Annie's a wonderful character, and I swear right here, right now, I will protest all further Spider-Man comics and media if Annie is not kept in some way, shape, or form after Secret Wars. She's an amazing character on her own, and she builds on the characters of Peter and MJ. Getting rid of her is a waste. Do not ruin this, Marvel. In the end, I'm going to give Renew Your Vows number 2 an 8 out of 10. At times, it felt kinda slow, and it was pretty short when compared to the first one. Also, Regent is really killing this series as a whole. If he's just going to be a generic villain, why not have Doom be in there? I don't know. Like I said in the beginning, Renew Your Vows has changed, so instead of every two weeks, it's once a month. I'm fairly certain Renew Your Vows number three will be the last one. So I'm curious as to how things are going to end if that's the last one. Either way, let me know. What did you think of Renew Your Vows number two? What do you think of Annie? Let me know any other comic stories you'd like me to talk about. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all next time.